Zach, thanks for joining me. Hey, thanks for having me, Steve. Good to have you. And we got some good news on the uh, interest rate front. Uh, mortgage rates are falling at the fastest pace since 2008. Uh, 30 year fixed mortgage uh, slipped to 7.17% last week. Um, and going back to October, the key borrowing rate has tumbled almost 70 basis points, 69 basis points. That's the biggest drop uh, during a five week period since uh, late 2008. Um, we're seeing mortgage refinance rates dropping and spurring uh, increased refinancing activity that jumped about 14% last week, uh, about 10% higher than the same week in 2022. Um, hasn't really translated into a lot of higher home buying um, as we're still seeing uh, limited inventory, high prices affect the market, but definitely a good thing that we're finally seeing mortgage rates start to come down and, and wanted to kind of get your thoughts on that as, as well as what you think the impact on the commercial sector is beyond just the uh, residential sector. Well, um, it's interesting times. It's an interesting article. It's interesting uh, comment. It sounds like good news, especially on the residential side, but I'm going to say I think it's actually bad news. As the rates come down, I think people are going to uh, potentially hold prices or raise prices, which might you know, keep the same level of unaffordability that we're seeing or have seen. Um, on the commercial side, kind of same comment. All of the deals that we've been looking at and things that look good right now, uh, people are holding the line as if they this is you know 2021 and 22 last year. Prices have not dipped uh, in spite of eight or nine percent interest rates from banks. And what we're seeing is is an artificial rate cut, even though the Fed is not cutting rates, but the bond market is anticipating that rates will be lower. So we've seen the same uh, almost 75 basis point or, or three quarters of one percent cut off of interest rates that, that um, are available to us. Um, so it is making deals or, or financing more affordable. It is breaking the logjam, but pricing has not reflected that. Uh, through the hardships and on the other side now we're seeing prices kind of go up they're they're creeping up so um, while it is nice to see lending come back on the commercial side and it is more affordable uh, breaking that log jam up will spur um, you know commercial real estate activity but we're not seeing any more affordability it's kind of just the opposite so not the best <laughs> sure and I guess from um the perspective of some of those owners out there that were maybe feeling uh, pressure as uh, maybe they're using adjustables or or, or maybe they're going to have to um, get new financing in place. Uh, you know, I, I guess this is good news, but um, for those that were really stressed out and possibly going to be forced to to sell at some lower prices for those buyers with cash, it's, it's possibly bad news. Well, they got some more breathing room. That, well, yeah, and that's great for them. But again, that's more bad news for us because we wanted to come in and say, hey, guys, you can't afford it. Cut your price. Let's buy your real estate. You know, <laughs> like there, there are some really good deals out there that had to uh, look at these these higher rates and these refinances and they're not able to get it done, which means we're able to get a fire sale. It's a great time to buy real estate. Um, but while that that was happening for a small period of time, we're watching the prices go back up. So it's it's tough you have to be very selective in what we're doing and the deals that we're pursuing and the markets that we're in and uh, we can find good stuff and breaking that log jam is great because now we can buy real estate and we can finance again but we're missing out on on all those opportunities all those people are getting a free pass for making mistakes so they got yeah. bailed out <laughs> so i guess i mean you know it, you're just kind of pointing out that purchasing real estate isn't just about your financing costs, your interest rates. It's also based on the price you're having to pay, especially uh, if you got a fair amount of cash or whatnot. Um, and just because rates have gone down, um, we're, we're not seeing a similar reflection in prices going down. If anything, you're seeing it a stabilizer even push prices higher. Um, right. So, you know, what you're just kind of pointing out is um, th this isn't really a huge game changer. Um, it, it's not necessarily a, a bad thing that financing has gotten less expensive, but um, if it's mixed with prices staying higher or, or going higher, it still creates a challenging environment for buyers. I will say that to me, this, my prediction is a bottoming out. And I think it kind of creates buoyancy in real estate in general and probably the economy as a whole that um, we may, and, and I hate making these predictions, but the worst of it may be behind us. 
I could be proven wrong, but that's kind of what it feels like at this point is is coming out the other side with these rates coming lower. Sure, sure. So, I mean, it has been a noticeable move, and I, I think, you know, we're going to have to see in terms of where the rate picture goes. But that certainly seems to be the market reaction right now is that, especially you look at stocks, you look at uh, real estate investment trusts, uh, the market seems to be reacting that we've you know, put in a cyclical top uh, for rates, um, that inflation's moderating. And it, we're not going to see uh, the kind of pressures we've been seeing with higher rates continue. So knock on wood, um, we'll, we'll, we'll touch base with this and see if it continues and keeps going in that direction. And we'll keep our eyes out for all those guys that still can't refinance. And hopefully we'll get some good deals. Okay. Well, I think we're going to talk about that separately. So uh, thanks a lot. Appreciate it, Zach. Take care.